Pastor Mark Buto, and this is the Higher Things Video Catechism. This episode, the Table of Duties of Civil Government. Ah, the government. What some people seem to call a necessary evil. It's like we need the government because that sort of organizes things and builds roads and protects our country and all that sort of thing. But on the other hand, people get so fed up with the government because there seems to be so many people in the government who are corrupt and sinful and just looking out for themselves. What do we do? What is the government's job? Why do we even have a government? Well, we learn from God's word that government is given by God. Just like all of these other vocations we're hearing about, vocation of government, governing officials, leaders, and rulers in our world are given by God to carry out his work in bringing order to society and stemming uh, some evil and turning the tide and blocking those who would do crimes and so on and so forth. Of course, some people say, well, how can the government block crimes when the government's full of criminals and so on and so on. But here's the thing. Government is instituted by God, and that's what the scriptures say. It's good to remember that every office of government is instituted by God, from the way high office, for example, the President of the United States, who has such power and influence that he can wield leadership across the world and into our daily lives in all kinds of different ways, all the way to our local government, even this lowly traffic cop who affects our lives in a way too with his leadership by making sure that we don't crash into each other. But each of these offices, from the highest to lowest, is instituted and given by God for the service of our neighbor. So what then are the responsibilities of those who hold government vocations, of those who are the president or in a seat in Congress or a king or a queen or a parliament or a local government official or a city council or a state legislature? What is the role of government? What is the command that God has given to government? Why does he establish it for our blessing and benefit? Let's take a look at what the table of duty says. And let's all read together. Everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, he who rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers hold no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong. Do you want to be free from fear of the one in authority? Then do what is right, and he will commend you. For he is God's servant to do you good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword for nothing. He is God's servant, an agent of wrath to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. Romans 13, verses 1 through 4. You notice that? That God has established the government. St. Paul tells us, St. Paul the Apostle, that God has established government to rule over us, to punish those who do evil, and to protect those who do good. If you think about it, at its core, that's a government's job, is to protect citizens from criminals and and those who break the law, and is to punish those who do break the law. If someone comes and steals your property, steals something that belongs to you, it's the government's job to find them, to prosecute them, and to get your property back, or to protect you in the first place. Hopefully they have police patrols and so on. So if you look at all the ways in which government is around us, protecting us, taking care of our infrastructure, and building our uh, roads and bridges and this sort of thing, and then uh, making sure that we have policemen, and firefighters, that we have uh, an armed forces to protect our nation and so on, there's lots of ways in which the government is there to protect us and so that we can live freely and in peace. But of course, we know that not every crime is punished. Lots of criminals get away with things. And of course, the government itself is filled with those who don't know their government vocation and they they do things wrong or they do things out of their own self-interest. In fact, there's two great examples biblically or in the history of the New Testament church that we see government gone wrong. The first example, of course, is this great one in which Pontius Pilate, who is the, the governor of Judea under the authority of the emperor of Rome, should let an innocent man, namely Jesus, go free, but doesn't because of the pressure of the crowds and so on. He is given by God and established by God to be the authority to punish those who do evil and to protect those who do good. But when Pontius Pilate does his thing with Jesus, it's the complete opposite, a complete miscarriage of justice. And then there was St. Paul, 
who, as tradition suggests, was beheaded for being a Christian under one of the persecutions under the Emperor Nero. Again, the Emperor, put there by God, established to punish those who do evil and to reward and protect those who do good, and yet St. Paul, who is innocent of any uh, imperial crime, is put to death merely because he bears the name of Christ. And again, another gross miscarriage of justice, another example of the governmental vocation not being carried out faithfully. So that's when we realize, with these great examples, that when we look at the table of duties, and the table of duties teaches us the scriptures that teach us what particular vocations and callings have as their responsibilities, that those who often hold those callings, hold those positions, who have been put there by God, really, because they're sinners, don't fulfill their duties faithfully. Well, what then? Remember, the table of duty, since it's teaching us the law, is always teaching us repentance. So if there's those who are government officials, they can learn repentance from this and see what it is they need forgiveness from, namely the fact that when you're in the government or hold a position of authority, it's very often tempting to use your power and abuse it to hurt others. It also reminds us as Christian citizens, and we'll get to citizens next time, but it reminds us as Christian citizens what we ought to strive for in those whom we elect, if we have that privilege, elect to our government, namely those who see themselves as put there by God for the benefit and blessing of those that they serve, not simply for their self-interest. But the table of duties of civil government reminds us that the gift that government is supposed to be, and of course, we don't obey the government when it's not against, when it goes against what God says, but where it doesn't, then we see that government is an honorable service established by God himself for carrying out his work in this world, namely to create some semblance of order in this world in which we live. Now, so there's government, but what about citizens? What about the citizens and their responsibility toward the government? And that's for the next bit on the table of duties. I'm Pastor Mark Buteau, and this has been another episode of the Higher Things Video Catechism.